kudos uh, just jumping at a crazy commission so early. I could understand why your hair was falling out, why you were stressed as hell. But um, <laughs> it definitely, yeah, you know, trial by fire. Here you are, like, chilling. Uh, and that's what counts. <laughs> and it's also very fun. You have to remember, like, Depending on your psychology, I suppose, but I can say that for me, some of the most fun moments that I often look back on and kind of smile about are those early moments in my life where I didn't know if this art thing was going to work out and it was all by the seat of my pants. Um, and I was just kind of like grinding and hoping and sometimes the bank account would get all low and stressful um, and those uh, early years uh, were extremely fun because after a while, if you keep going at this, um, it gets to a point where things are like easier mm -hmm. and it is quite difficult to uh, put yourself in a stressful, challenging situation, which is partially why, oh, hey, chicken, my cat. Uh, which is partially why my friend and I, we started uh, going out on plein air painting because um, we both have a lot of experience in portrait painting. And I asked myself, well, what's the next, uh, how do I get that student mindset, uh, which is so pleasurable, honestly fun to be in when your brain is alive and learning and you can like literally feel your brain like working at its highest capacity. So we went out uh, plein air painting and learning about landscape. And now those plein air paintings, they help me in my studio paintings where I want to place a figure into a big background, like this painting that we spoke about earlier. Um, so always finding a way to challenge yourself, which becomes harder and harder uh, to do as you get comfortable with life and things. Mm -hmm. um, with pressures, you get comfortable with high prices and they don't cause pain anymore. Um, you have to, I guess, find your areas of weakness and then address those in a stressful way. For me, I know what my next stressful thing would be. It would be to give workshops and do painting demonstrations. That is so scary to me right now. There, I've only taught, um, when I got back from Watts, one of the things that I stressed myself with was after two semesters at Watts, I got back to Montreal for six months before my next two semesters. And I taught an oil painting fundamentals class after two semesters of <laughs> taking an atelier. But luckily the Watts atelier was so good and so informative. And I learned so much that I actually genuinely brought a lot of new information to the table in the context of Montreal which is a place that uh, lacks information. So I can't say that, like, if I went to New York, like, hi, I took two semesters of Watts, <laughs> can, can I teach class? That's a different uh, case. But I put myself in that situation, and I had to do uh, a demo, and that was very scary. And for me right now, my next goal is I'm kind of training right now to um, doing things that would make me be okay at giving a demo. Because once again, if I do a workshop and uh, somebody pays their money, no matter how, how it is, even if it's like a $50 Zoom workshop, I don't care, that somebody wanted to do something with me and they trusted that I'm going to deliver what I said, that is extremely, extremely scary. And what's scarier than people literally watching you paint live, so... Um, that's what I'm working on now. So I'm doing these daily head studies for up to an hour and a half just to get um, good at not messing up uh, the first lay-in. And I'm going to work my... Actually, I'm not taking my advice. I got uh, lazy, comfy, and uh, fat and happy. I'm, I'm building up too slowly and not taking my own advice to giving a workshop. The old me would book a workshop right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not the old me anymore. I'm all comfy now. So uh, don't be like me. Uh, I'm trying to acclimatize myself yeah. to it. 